Dear learners, a very warm welcome to all of you. In previous session on microbes in human welfare, we discussed about microbes in organic acids, amino acids, organic solvents, in enzymes, etc. In this session, we will discuss microbes as pollution control agents for sewage treatment in detail, Ganga action plan, Yamuna plan and energy production that is biogas. Microbes play a very important role in our life. There are many microorganisms which make our life difficult to live in as they cause diseases, not only in human beings but also in other animals and plants. But they have another role in our day to day life in which their contribution is more significant to keep us healthy. Now, let us discuss microbes as pollution control agents. Nowadays, we are facing the problem of different environmental pollution. Microorganisms can play an important role for the solution to overcome challenges. Because of their astonishing metabolic activity, microorganisms can survive in all places in the biosphere in all ranges of environmental conditions. The nutritional capacity of microorganisms is completely varied. So, it is used as bioremediation of environmental pollutants. Currently, microbes are used to clean up pollution treatment in processes that is known as bioremediation. Bioremediation uses microorganisms to reduce pollution through the biological degradation of pollutants into non-toxic substances. Bioremediation is a biological mechanism of recycling waste into another form that can be used and reused by other organisms. Bioremediation is highly involved in degradation, eradication, altering, immobilization or detoxification of diverse chemical, waste and physical hazardous material from the surrounding through the all inclusive action of bacteria, fungi and plants. The main principle is degrading and transforming pollutants such as hydrocarbon oil, heavy metal, pesticides, dyes and so on that is carried out by their enzymatic pathways. Metabolizing a variety of materials compounds to help them generate energy and nutrients to build more cells. So, it has a role to solve many environmental problems. The efficiency of bioremediation depends on many factors including the chemical nature and concentration of pollutants the physicochemical characteristics of the environment and their availability to microorganisms. Now, let us discuss the role of microbes in sewage treatment. What is sewage? The municipal waste water containing large quantities of human excreta constitutes sewage. In cities and towns, every day a large quantity of sewage is produced. Sewage is generated by residential, institutional, commercial and industrial establishments. It includes household waste, liquid from toilets, baths, showers, kitchens and sinks draining into sewers. In many areas, sewage also includes liquid waste from industry and commerce. What is the sewage composition? Sewage is formed of 99.9% .9 of water and only 0.1% of solid impurities in the form of suspended solids like sand, silt and clay. It constitutes the organic colloidal compounds such as carbohydrates, fats, oil, grease and proteins mainly from domestic waste, for example, pieces, bacteria, cloth, paper and fibers, etc. 
it also contains dissolved in organic matter such as nitrates phosphates of calcium and sodium etc mainly from agricultural use it primarily contains biodegradable organic matter and many types of pathogenic microbes as only 0.1% of impurities make the sewage unfit for human consumption therefore it is essential to remove these impurities before they are released to the environment into natural water bodies like rivers and streams because it interferes natural habitats by altering the chemical composition such as ph or oxygen level both directly and indirectly what is sewage treatment it is the process of removing contaminants from municipal wastewater containing mainly household sewage plus some industrial wastewater physical chemical and biological processes are used to remove contaminants and produce treated wastewater or treated effluent that is safe enough for release into the environment a by product of sewage treatment is a semi solid waste or slurry this is called sewage sludge the sludge has to undergo further treatment before being suitable for disposal or application to land for most cities the sewer system will also carry a proportion of industrial effluent to the sewage treatment plant which has usually received pre treatment at the factories themselves to reduce the pollutant load sewage water can travel towards treatment plants via piping and a flow aided by the gravity and the pumps the first part of filtration of sewage typically includes a bar screen to filter solids and large objects which are then collected in dumpsters and disposed of in landfills fat and grease is also removed before the primary treatment of sewage industrial waste water may contain pollutants which cannot be removed by conventional sewage treatment also variable flow of industrial waste associated with production cycles may upset the population dynamics of biological treatment units such as the activated sludge process sewage treatment generally involves three stages these are called primary secondary and tertiary treatment before going to first stage that is the primary treatment the sewage is required a pre treatment step in which the large objects are separated out from it what is pre treatment the pre treatment removes all materials that can be easily collected from the raw sewage before they damage or clog the pumps and sewage lines of primary treatment clarifies objects commonly removed during pre treatment includes trash tree limbs leaves branches and other large objects the influent in sewage water passes through a bar screen to remove all large objects like cans rags sticks plastic packets etc these are carried in the sewage stream this is most commonly done with an automated mechanically rigged bar screen in modern plants serving large populations while in smaller a less modern plants a manually clean screen may be used the solids are collected and later disposed of in a landfill or incinerated pre treatment may include a sand or a grit channel or chamber where the velocity of the incoming sewage is adjusted to allow the settlement of sand and grit grit removal is necessary first to reduce formation of heavy deposits in aeration tanks aerobic digesters pipelines channels and conduits second to reduce the frequency of digester cleaning caused by excessive accumulation of grit third 
to protect moving mechanical equipment from abrasion and accompanying abnormal wear. The removal of grit is essential for equipment with closely machined metal surfaces such as comminutes, fine screens, centrifuges, heat exchangers and high pressure diaphragm pumps. Now come to primary treatment. In the primary sedimentation stage, sewage flows through large tanks. They are commonly called pre-settling basins. The primary sedimentation tanks or primary clarifiers. The tanks are used to settle sludge with grease and oil rise to the surface and skimmed off. Mechanical screening and sedimentation of undissolved and stable solids like polythene bags and other objects, large lump of organic matter, salt and slit is done. Primary settling tanks are usually equipped with mechanically driven scrapers that continually drive the collected sludge towards a hopper in the base of the tank where it is pumped to sludge treatment facilities. The sewage is passed through mesh screens of successively smaller pore sizes. Finally, the sewage is passed into the primary settling tank where most of the suspended particles settle down to form the primary sludge where the supernatants from effluent, it fails to remove any dissolved substances in water. It does not remove the pathogens. Next is microbial processes. The microbial processes can be categorized into aerobic and anaerobic. First is aerobic. After primary treatment, liquid and solid phases are physically separated. The liquid phase is treated with aeration to allow aerobic degradation of the nutrients. The two important microbial processes at this stage are nitrification and phosphorus removal. Nitrification, it occurs in two discrete steps. First of all, ammonium is oxidized to nitrite by nitrosomonas species and nitrite is further oxidized to nitrate by nitrobacter species. Next step is phosphorus removal. It can occur biologically by the process of enhanced biological phosphorus removal. The process is demonstrated by the cell taking up phosphorus within their cell and biomass is filtered. Next come to anaerobic. In the liquid component of sewage, denitrifying bacteria reduce nitrate to dinitrogen gas which liberates nitrate from the sewage. The solid component of the sewage separated in primary treatment is fermented by bacteria anaerobically. Next step is secondary treatment or biological treatment. Secondary treatment is designed to substantially degrade the biological content of the sewage which is derived from the human waste, food waste, soaps and detergent. The majority of municipal plants treat the settled sewage liquor using aerobic biological processes. To be effective, the biota require both oxygen and food to live. The bacteria and protozoa consume biodegradable soluble organic contaminants, for example, sugars, fats, organic short chain carbon molecules and bind much to the less soluble fractions into flocks. The suspended growth system include activated sludge where the biomass is mixed with the sewage and can be operated in a smaller space than tickling filters that treat the same amount of water. Affluent of primary treatment is brought in contact with the oxygen and aerobic microbes in an oxidation tank. Microorganisms break the organic matter into harmless materials such as carbon dioxide and water. There are certain factors which control the treatment of sewage in secondary treatment. First is 
oxygen level. Oxygen level is an important factor to secondary and tertiary treatment processes. During secondary treatment, oxygen is required as a terminal electron acceptor in organic matter degradation. For example, nitrification by nitrosomonas and nitrobacter species. These require dissolved oxygen to occur. Oxygen in secondary treatment is provided manually by pumping oxygen into the sewage continuously which occurs in an aeration or oxidation tank. In the aeration tank, the bacteria multiply rapidly and form masses along with fungal filaments to form aggregates. These are called flocks. The flocks are formed of bacteria and filamentous fungi, yeast and protozoans which are held together by slime and fungal hyphae to form a mesh like structure. These flocks sediment at the bottom of the tank and is called activated sludge. This process is also called aerobic but it depends on the diffusion of oxygen because most organic matter has been degraded by the secondary treatment. Next factor is pH. Acidity plays a crucial role in the breakdown of organic matter because pH affects the solubility of compounds which indirectly affect the accessibility by bacteria. Also, bacteria responsible for organic matter degradation are sensitive to the pH of the environment. Extremely high or low pH levels are able to kill bacteria. Deposition of organic matter occurs due to lack of degradation. Hence, the pH of sewage treatment is controlled to be around 7. Next factor is temperature. The effect of temperature is influential for secondary treatment, but it is not important in primary treatment. Bacterial growth is sensitive to temperature because high temperature can increase the fluidity of phospholipid bilayer which leads to cell lysis. However, bacteria are known to have higher enzymatic activity at higher temperature because of increased thermal energy. Next factor is nutrients availability. There are lot of nutrients available in the sewage because of human waste and agricultural runoff. Bacteria can harvest the electron from organic matter and transfer it to a terminal electron acceptor which results in the breakdown of organic matter and energy conservation. The commonly used bacteria are Clostridium coliform, Pseudomonas and Micrococcus etc. The microorganisms reduce the amount of organic matter and thus reduce the biological or the biochemical oxygen demand or known as BOD. BOD is the amount of oxygen required by the aerobic microbes to decompose the organic compounds in a sample of water. It is a measure of organic pollutants in the waste water. The greater is the BOD of the waste water, more is the amount of organic matter in the water and more it is polluted. The waste water having a high amount of organic waste has high BOD because the microbes require more oxygen to decompose them. Therefore, BOD has a direct relationship with the organic waste while has an inverse relationship with dissolved oxygen. A sharp decline of dissolved oxygen in water causes increased fish mortality. A part of activated sludge is pumped back into the aeration tank to serve as the inoculums, while the remaining major part of the sludge is pumped into anaerobic sludge digesters for anaerobic microbial decomposition and the production of biogas. The bacteria are able to decompose most of the organic matter, while algae provide oxygen to these decomposers. The spent sludge of anaerobic sludge digester can be used as manure or part of the compost. 
but the water still carries a large amount of nitrates and phosphates etc. Now next come to tertiary treatment. Tertiary treatment of effluent involves a series of additional steps after secondary treatment to further reduce organics, turbidity, nitrogen, phosphorus, metals and pathogens. Most processes involve some type of physicochemical treatment such as coagulation, filtration, activated carbon absorption of organics, reverse osmosis and additional disinfection or chlorination etc. Tertiary treatment of waste water is practiced for additional protection of wildlife after discharge into the rivers or lakes. Even more commonly it is performed when the waste water is to be reused for irrigation. For example, food crops, golf courses, for recreational purposes, for example, lakes, estuaries or for drinking water. Now come to Yamuna action plan. River Yamuna, which was earlier considered a holy river, has now been turned into an open sewer. A measure of sewage contamination is the coliform bacteria. Study conducted by the CPCB indicated that major cause of pollution is the discharge of domestic wastewater into the river, which is about two-third of the pollution load. The remaining pollution is contributed by industries and agriculture. Based on the findings of this study, the government of India decided to take up water quality restoration measures. They are named as Yamuna Action Plan or YAP. Under the mega project of the Ganga Action Plan that is GAP phase 2, YAP was formally launched in 1993, now called YAP phase 1 or the YAP phase 1 was initiated by government of India in April 1993 to abate the pollution and improve the water quality of the river Yamuna. YAP 1 was scheduled for completion in April 2002, but the planned projects continued until 2003. Next is YAP 2. In order to achieve the desired river standards, Government of India launched YAP 2 in December 2004. It was scheduled to be completed by September 2008. Next is YAP 3. The third phase of YAP was from 2011 to 2018. The implementing agency for the current phase in Delhi Jal Board under the supervision of Department of Urban Development, Government of NCT of Delhi. Next is Ganga Action Plan. Today, the Ganga is considered to be the sixth most polluted river in the world. Pollution of the Ganga, the largest river in India, poses significant threat to human health and the larger environment. Severely polluted with human waste and industrial contaminants, the river provides water to about 40% of India's population across 11 states serving an estimated population of 500 million people, which is more than any other river in the world. About 1000 million liters of sewage is discharged daily into the river. The Ganga Action Plan or GAP was launched on 14 January 1986 with covering 25 class 1 towns, 6 in Uttar Pradesh, 4 in Bihar, and 15 in West Bengal. Its main objective was to improve the water quality by the interception, diversion and treatment of domestic sewage and to prevent toxic and industrial chemical waste from identifying polluting units from entering the river. A number of initiatives have been undertaken to clean the river but failed to deliver as desired results. This plan was withdrawn on 31st March 2000. Subsequently, the Namami Gange project was announced by the government 
in June 2014. National Ganga River Basin Authority that is NGRBA was established on 20th February 2009 under EPA in 1986. World Bank has approved dollar 1 billion for NGRBA. Now come to the causes of pollution. The main cause of water pollution in the Ganga river are the increase in the population density, various human activities such as bathing, washing clothes and bathing of animals and dumping of various harmful industrial waste into the river. Let us see the industrial waste which is polluting Ganga river because of the establishment of large number of industrial cities on the bank of the Ganga like Kanpur, Prayagraj, Varanasi and Patna, countless tanneries, chemical plants, textile mills, distilleries, slaughterhouses and hospital prosper and grow along this and contribute to the pollution of the Ganga by dumping untreated waste into it. Certain religious traditions that are during festival seasons, over 70 million people bath in Ganga to clean themselves from their past sins. Some materials like food, waste or leaves are left in the Ganga which are also responsible for its pollution. Traditional beliefs hold that being cremated on its banks and to float down the Ganga will alone for this sins of those who die and carry them directly to salvation. In Varanasi alone an estimated 40,000 bodies are cremated every year into the Ganga into many of which are only half burnt. Dear learners, in this session we discussed microbes as pollution control agents and microbes for sewage treatment in detail. With this session we have completed the chapter on microbes in human welfare and I hope that it will be helpful for you. Thank you.